Tigers Five. ready to play. They were locked in a hot battle with Louisville that night. The biggest lead in the ball game was five points, and William Bedford's 20 led Memphis State. Denny Crum saw his Cardinals fight back. They got strong play down the line from veteran players, but when it was over, Memphis State had maintained their high national ranking with a hard-fought 73-71 victory over the Louisville Cardinals. Today, it's the rematch at Freedom Hall in Louisville. Tangle with the Louisville Cardinals. Freedom Hall in Louisville, where a near-record crowd has packed the hall this afternoon to watch the Memphis State Tigers and the Louisville Cardinals battle for the Metro Conference Championship. They are here, 19,000 strong. Hello, everybody. It is show-and-tell time in the Metro this afternoon. I'm Fred White, and this is Larry Conley. And, Larry, this is the time of the year that basketball players play for. Fred, usually at this time of the year, we also get a lot of statistics. Throw out the statistics. This is the kind of basketball game that you want to see. This is the best there is in the nation. You've got two schools, the best in the Metro Conference at this point. They're playing as tough as they can possibly play. You're going to see great competition out here. Both teams ranked in the top 20. Great individual play today. The matchup in the middle, the junior William Bedford against the freshman Purvis Ellison. Purvis Ellison, probably the best kid coming player in the Metro Conference this year. Make it a lot of votes for freshman of the year. He's going up against probably one of the best centers in the country, and I think it's going to be a great matchup of two Titans. Memphis State has won four straight games from Louisville, and Larry, one of the reasons why, over the last five ball games, Memphis State has held Billy Thompson to an average of six points and 31% shooting, with Baskerville Holmes having the primary responsibility on him. They played tough defense against him. Well, you talk about Baskerville Holmes. Yeah, he scores a lot. Yes, he rebounds a lot. But probably the most unheralded part of his game is his defense. He's done a great job against Thompson. Baskerville Holmes is one of the most underrated players in this country, and you're going to see that great matchup between Thompson and Holmes today. So great individual matchups all down the line. You can go on and on with Turner Wagner, etc. The point here today, they are playing for the Metro Conference Championship. You have the number eight team in the country, the Memphis State Tigers against number 13 Louisville on the final day of the regular season here in Freedom Hall. It is a great collegiate basketball match after today. We hope you're going to enjoy it. We're getting set to go. We'll be back to meet the starting lineup right after you hear this. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, we direct your attention to center court where athletic director Mr. Bill Olson and coach Jenny Crum are paying tribute to a special friend of the University of Louisville, Mr. Jack Savage. Mr. Savage is a 1986 recipient of the Cardinal Spirit Award, giving in recognition of his many years of support and his loyalty to the university. Congratulations, Mr. Savage, the 1986 Cardinal Spirit Award recipient. That's what he told me to do. Introductions. And good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Kentucky Fair and Exposition Center and Freedom Hall for the thrill and the excitement of college basketball as the University of Louisville Fighting Cardinals host the Tigers of Memphis State University. And now introducing the starting lineups. First for Memphis State, number 30, at a forward 6'6", six, six, a sophomore from Memphis, Tennessee, Vincent Askew. At the other forward, number 43, 6'7", a senior from Memphis, Tennessee, Baskerville Holmes. At center, number 50, 7 feet, a junior from Memphis, Tennessee, William Bedford. At guard, number 10, 5'10", a senior from Memphis, Tennessee, Andre Turner. And at guard, number 31, 6'3", a sophomore from Memphis, Tennessee, Dwight Boyd. And now, introducing our University of Louisville Fighting Cardinals. At guard, number 20, 6'5", a senior from Camden, New Jersey, Milton Wagner. At guard, number 42, 6'4", a senior from Ashland, Kentucky, Jeff Hall. At center, number 
number 43, 6'9", a freshman from Savannah, Georgia, Purvis Ellison. And forward, number 41, 6'7", a sophomore from Louisville Eastern, And today, Coach Denny Crum's 49th birthday. Welcome to Denny Crum's birthday party at Freedom Hall in Louisville. We're set to go. The Tigers of Memphis State, the Cardinals of Louisville for the Metro Conference Championship back after this message. There again, the way they'll start here this afternoon. Four seniors playing their final regular season home game for Louisville here today. Memphis State with three seniors, so a lot of these guys will be back again next year, and they have the Metro Conference Tournament to go here next weekend. Three strong veteran officials on the game today, Larry. Paul Galvin, Paul Hausman, Don Rutledge. Also, Fred, I think it's kind of interesting. We talked about those statistics at the top of the show. Memphis State has won the last four meetings between these two clubs. But at home, Louisville has won 88% of their games. Irresistible force meeting the immovable object. So we're set to play. Bedford and Ellison are in the center circle. Bad toss, and they're going to do it again. I think Paul Galvin even overestimated <laughs> Bedford and Ellison's ability to get up. <laughs> Vincent Askew with a smile for Paul Galvin. Now we've got a tip, and Louisville has the ball. Listen to the crowd just because they got the tip. Milt Whitener. Oh, look at Herbert Crook go on the offensive board, and here comes Memphis State. Askew in a three-on-two break. To Boyd. Blocked by Ellison. Jeff Hall. Billy Thompson got the baseline. Nice fake. Bedford rebounds it. I think the adrenaline isn't pumping here right now. Both of those shots just barely off of the mark. Andre Turner. Ellison with a strong rebound. He's got a block and a very strong rebound already. That block for Ellison incidentally was his 75th block of the year. He has blocked as many shots as Louisville's opponents collectively this year. Fred, you know, oftentimes we talk about a game like this, Super Bowls, whatever it is, sometimes we over who the game. We feel like we may promote it too much. You can't promote this one enough. These, this crowd is into the game, and these two clubs have come ready to play. They are great rivals. Milt Wagner. Gentlemen, the proceedings are open. <laughs> Wagner gets the first two points of the game. 2-0 Louisville. Look at Andre Turner. So very difficult to guard. Hard to press him. Askerville Holmes. The game is tied. We talked about his defensive ability. He can do a lot of that, too. He can score, averaging 13 points a game and a turnover by Wagner. Wagner called for traveling. Last game they played, Baskerville Holmes shut Billy Thompson down with just five points, and Holmes scored 14 points and had a dozen rebounds. Andre Turner, Jeff Hall has him. Hall hits the deck, got picked. Turner is going to take the jumper from the baseline and drill it. Andre Turner's first two points, and Memphis State leads 4-2. Askew said a cement block pick there. <laughs> he could not get around him. Herbert Crook. Got his own offensive rebound. That's his second offensive rebound in the game. Boyd, look at him go. Change of pace, dribble. And Andre Turner picks the rebound off. Going to try it again. And got it. Andre Turner has four points. You get the feeling you might be watching the streets of New York, concrete pavement and all. These two guys, I mean, these two teams are really going at each other. Memphis State up by four. Billy Thompson dribbling against the press in backcourt. Finds Milt Wagner. Now on up to Herbert Crook. Oh, nice dish across to Ellison. Shot won't fall. Ellison and Crook battling for the offensive rebound. Dana Kirk off the bench immediately. Look at him talking to Paul Galvin. He says, my guy didn't touch the ball. Should go the other way. They're going to give the ball to Louisville. Wagner out front. Memphis State in a quick zone on the inbounds pass. 2-3 right now. You see right on front, Boyd and Turner anchoring the top of it. Jeff Hall, long range short with a try. Had his own rebound for a moment. Nice save by Crook, but it's picked off by Turner. Now out of bounds, and Memphis State will get it this time. Jeff Hall has been shooting the ball well. He shot 59% over his last 12 ball games. Didn't shoot quite that well last Wednesday at South Carolina, but he's had it working. Short with his first try here this afternoon. White Boyd's going to try it from the side of the circle. In and out. Neither club shooting well right now. Now, right now, three of seven for Memphis State. Louisville, one of seven. 
Wagner has the one. Billy Thompson in the key. Nice turnaround jump shot. Two points, Billy Thompson. Two-point lead, Memphis State. Fred, you know these seniors want to play well today. They've lost the last four meetings between these two clubs. They want to go out with a win against Memphis State. Baskerville Holmes. Four points for Holmes. And 8-4, Memphis State. Holmes got another shot right in that same position, right where he got the first one. Purvis Ellison way out on the floor. Jeff Hall looking over that Memphis State defense. They're man-to-man -man right now. Louisville just a touch hesitant, perhaps, with the offense here. Ellison faces the basket, puts it up short. And Holmes takes the rebound out of there for Memphis State, and he is playing strongly in the early minutes here. Well, Memphis State early going here. Looks like they're going to get control of the backboards. They've shut off at Louisville from getting any offensive rebounds. Bedford's first shot. Nice soft touch. He drills it. William Bedford has two points. 10-4. Memphis State by six in the early going. 16-29 left in the first half. Milt Wagner's alone on the wing. Goes baseline. Four points, Wagner. And now Louisville is going to apply the full court pressure. Andre Turner, not the least bit bothered by it all, simply dribbles to midcourt. He's a tough man to press, Larry. Well, he really is, and particularly with a guy like Hall. Hall can in no way keep up with his speed. Look at that. How many trips did it make around the rim? Holmes has six points now. And again, the six-point lead to Memphis State. A deflection by Askew. Really, there are several theories on how to beat the press. One real good one is give the ball to Andre Turner. Exactly. You recruit a guy like Turner and let him just handle it. Time out early here at Freedom Hall with 15.52 left in our first half. Six-point lead. Right here, you're going to see the way Memphis State and Louisville play each other. Watch Turner with his basketball. Good bounce pass. Goes up. Here's the shot. Watch it go back off the edge of the rim. Look at Milt Wagner high in the air for the rebound. Takes it off. Looks up court. Takes it up and, in fact, got the shot at the other end. Larry, you've been involved in big games like this. Two teams with great reputations go head to head. Sometimes you like to get something going real early in the ball game, and maybe you're too anxious to do it either. Well, the individuals going up against each other, you know, they've been playing each other for so many years. I like to go out there and say, hey, look, I'm the one that's going to be established my principal today, and I'm the one that's going to do something. Billy Thompson just committed a turnover. Billy Thompson with tremendous talent, averaging 14 points, eight rebounds, and four assists a game. If there's a chink in the army, it's an armor. It's a tendency to turn the ball over. It's 112 turnovers this year. Kimbrough now in the game for Louisville. They got pressure on Andre Turner, and look at him beat it. Deflected by Wagner out of bounds. It's Memphis State basketball. Yeah, I sometimes think he gets as big a kick handling a press as he does making a basket. He loves to dribble around those guys out front. Amazing little ball handler. Amazing player. Boyd from the baseline. Not good. Well, Memphis State has really started hot out of the box. Now seven for 11 from the floor, and they've opened an eight-point lead over Louisville here. The Cardinals need to get it going offensively. Long pass. Purvis Ellison takes it to the wing. Fakes Bedford off his feet. Now goes back to Thompson. And from the corner, Milt Wagner. Ellison had the tip. Couldn't knock it down. And now Holmes chases it down, and here comes Memphis State with an eight-point lead. Andre Turner put everybody in the air. Shot won't fall. Thompson has it. Here comes Louisville. Tough break for Memphis State. They had a chance to go up by 10. Now Louisville with a chance to get it down to six. Thompson again with a travel. Two times. Andre Turner launched the entire Louisville team with that fake a moment ago. <laughs> he had all of the All five of them were flying by. That's going to be a foul on Kimbrough for holding Turner. You know, Fred, I think that's one of the things that makes this Memphis State Club such a great club and a good possibility of making the Final Four this year is the fact that they've got a great point guard in Turner, they've got a good center in Bedford, and they've got a good supporting cast with Boyd, Holmes, and Askew, and they've got good players coming off the bench. I think Dana Kirk is well-tuned. He's making that march, and I think he's trying to get to Dallas. Lob to Bedford, but he can't control it. Herbert Crook to Wagner. Cardinal's going to run it. Spin move. Shot won't fall. Ellison's got the tip. He was pushed from behind. And I think the bucket's going to count. We talked about the two centers at the top of the show. Watch it right here. Purvis Ellison with a great tip in. William Bedford with a little push in the back. I didn't see the push, but I saw the tip in. 
First foul on Bedford. Purvis Ellison looking to complete the three-point play now. The 6'9 freshman from Savannah, Georgia. And Louisville getting the big play that they needed. Down by five points now. Turner. Boyd. Oh, he's lighting it up. Four points. White Boyd, 16-9 Memphis State. And Turner got a hand on the ball. Out of bounds to Memphis State. It was off the hands of Crook. Andre Turner caused the turnover. Lightning quick defense for Memphis State. Here's the turnover right here. Boy, is Turner ever quick. There's Milt. Crook going off his hands. Milt Wagner now defending Turner. Tony Kimbrough. And a foul called on Boyd. White Boyd draws his first. The second on Memphis State. Sixteen to nine, Memphis State with a seven-point lead here. Louisville got a quick bucket early to take a lead, but it's been all Memphis State since that time. And you really got to hand it to a ball club comes in this situation, Larry, and plays this well early in the game. Well, I think Dana Kirk has brought his club in here prepared to play. They know what Louisville's got. They know how to play them. They've played each other for so many years. They know what the talent is that's available. What you've got to do is play to your strength, and that's what Memphis State has done in the early going here in the first half. What a shoving along the baseline. White Boyd was holding Tony Kimbrough that time, and Boyd has drawn his second foul. Dana Kirk calls him over to have a chat with him. Watch the foul right here. Good move to the inside. Kimbrough's going to come from the other side and pop out, but the Boyd's going to grab him before he can get there. Milt Wagner in the lane. Shot off the heel of the rim. Cardinals having shooting problems. Look at the rebound battle, and Askew wins it for Memphis State, and then hands it midcourt. Or he does so many things for this team. Excellent player. Including scoring. That one wouldn't fall for it. Curtis Ellison clears the rebound. There's a lot of talent out there. Goodness, it's fun to watch. And that's evidence by the fact of the number of NBA scouts we've got here today. We must have a dozen. Billy Thompson has four. Five-point lead Memphis State. Fred, I really feel that Louisville's going to win this game today. They've got to have a good performance from Bill Thompson. Foul on Milt Wagner. He had sort of a mid-season slump, but he's really kind of turned it around the last couple of weeks and has really started to play up to the capabilities they thought he was, well, what they thought when they got him back when he was a freshman. Billy Thompson got angry with some people. He was booed here in Freedom Hall, a sound you don't hear very often, and he really responded with strong efforts. Boyd, Askew, Bedford against Ellison, tried to hook it, and Herbert Crook got him on the arm. First foul on Herbert Crook, second on, third on Louisville, excuse me. The idea is good, it's just the execution isn't. Crook coming over, trying to help some. Ellison trying to guard Bedford. Got him right on the arm just as he started around with that hook. Well, you mentioned scouts here. One guy appreciating all this guard play has to be a pretty good guard in his own right. Jerry West sitting down at the end of the court. He has all the model one last night. Bedford has three points. Seven-footer, a junior from Memphis Melrose. Some people wondering if he might leave school at the end of his junior year. I read a couple of days ago where he said, nope, he's going to play at Memphis State next year. Off the heel of the rim. It is 17 to 11 now, Memphis State. Louisville could close it to four. Hall. How about that move by Hall getting around Turner? Thompson. How about that move by Thompson getting around Holmes? <laughs> Six points, Billy Thompson, and Jeff Hall set the bucket up. Now it's just a four-point lead. Andre Turner got Kimbrough in the air. He's to Askew, now to Boyd. Boyd's had a little room on that wing. Right back to Askew it goes, and the floating jumper in that. Whoa, that was Bedford to slam it home. Louisville wanting basket interference. They're not going to get it. In fact, the entire city wanted it. There were 19,000 of them up there waving their arms around like it was, the ball was on the cylinder. Team 13, Memphis State, 11.47 left in our first half. So far, we've got Thompson with three of four in the first half. You know, Jeff Hall's done a pretty good job against Turner. It's a good move. Oh, what a work by Jeff Hall, his first two points. 
you know, Turner has such a great defensive reputation. You've got to be very careful around him because he can't steal the ball and do it quickly. But Hall's handling him so far. Burgess Ellison with a near steal deflected it out of bounds. Listen to the crowd in Freedom Hall. Denny Crum was off the bench complaining about this one right here. He might have had a legitimate concern. Looked like a little bit of that ball might have still been on the rim. This telecast is a copyrighted presentation of Raycom Sports. Any reuse of this telecast without the express written consent of Raycom Sports is prohibited. That mistake taking a little command early in this ball game. Now it's a four-point lead. The Tigers up by eight at one time. Compared to this point, both clubs have attempted seven shots. It's just that Memphis State has made two more field goals than Louisville. The rebounding to the edge of the Cardinals, 11 to 8. The turnovers, Louisville already has five, and Memphis State has but one. Andre Turner, Jeff Hall defending Turner, then dropping back to help against Bedford. Now Turner steps in, takes the jumper, misses, and Hall clears the rebound. And Turner ran off and left that shot. Bill Wagner to Ellison, blocked by Bedford. Out of bounds to Memphis State. Denny Crum saying, how come? Well, he's upset. Well, we're having a discussion right now. I think maybe Ellison might have gotten hit on the arm. Let's watch it again right here. He goes it. down with a basketball. Watch him turn and make this move right here. It's out of bounds. They have changed the call. They're giving the ball to Louisville, and there's a good change now. Dana Kirk wants to know why. Ellison to Hall. Louisville trying to get within two. Dana Kirk saying it should have been a jump ball. Hall. Short. Out of bounds. Louisville. Dana still wants a jump ball. Good reason. If there's a jump ball, it would be Memphis State basketball. The arrow belongs to the Tigers. Louisville controlled the opening tip. Memphis State and zone. Wagner had a no got a haul open. There it is, his third try. Ooh, he's having some shooting problems. It's 0 for 3. Milt Wagner in the circle. He's not having problems. He has six points. Now two-point lead in Memphis State. For an important point to note right here is Jeff Hall cannot stop shooting. He's wide open. He's going to make his shots. That third. Turner against Hall. Hall has the added responsibility of defending Turner right now. That might take a little something. Yeah, if you're Jeff Hall, though, in your mind, what you got to be thinking is, I'm going to get off of him a little bit because he's too quick for me. Boyd. Oh, look at Billy Thompson take command. The dish to Ellison, the jumper, tie. 19-19, and Ellison has five. And listen to him. They're waving the red shakers in Louisville. Taken back by Askew and a foul committed. Tony Kimbrough draws his second foul. Watch the lob by Turner to the inside. It's a good slap right there by Ellison to keep the ball away from Bedford. It goes back outside. Kimbrough gets a hand on it. Askew comes down with it. Kimbrough commits the foul. Four team fouls called against Louisville now. Three have been charged in Memphis State. Baskerville Holmes will play it inbound. Ellison, a good point a minute ago, Larry. Kept that ball in play after the deflection. Did not swat it out of bounds. He went up and kept it on the court. Andre Turner has picked up the dribble. I'm ready to continue my point earlier. Jeff Hall knows he's not as quick as Turner, so he gives him a couple of steps. Look at the help by Hall. He came over to help out on defense and took it away from Askew. And now the Cardinals with a chance to go in front here. They were down by eight. Hall was blocked by Turner. And the ball belongs to Louisville. Andre Turner with great defense. A little bit of a roll reversal right here. It should be Hall who's blocking shots. He's the taller of the two, but that time Turner got up and got his. Andre's third block of the year. Ellison missed from short range. Crook had it, and it was stripped out of there by Andre Turner, who simply wrestled the ball away from the bigger man and then hits the shot at the other end. Six points for Andre Turner. Fred, how many times this year have we talked about his domination in this league? He probably is the most dominating player in the country at his size under six feet. Well, he just did. He went back to the other end and shut down Billy Thompson and stopped the break. Oh, the Crook. Tough shot. 
Left-handed it up there, underhanded. What an acrobatic move, but it didn't go down. Herbert Crook going to the left hand that time, going across the lane. Boy, is this action fast, and is it furious? I tell you, it was a great shot, even though it didn't fall, just to get that one off. Good. Crook has an awful flat trajectory on that shot. He needs to get it up just a little bit. Bend the knees a little deeper and get the ball up. A little more arch. Two points, Herbert Crook. Alexander in the ball game for Memphis State now. What's Turner? He's directing traffic out there. You got Crook on Turner. How about 6-7 against 5-10? Bedford, top of the circle. Ellison comes out to meet him. He's not going to give him much room. Now Wagner switches off. They got caught in a switch, and now Wagner guards turn. Bedford off the baseline. Foul called. Curtis Ellison, his first. Number five on Louisville. It's a great matchup. Good dish inside by Turner. Bedford tried to make the move around him. Ellison got a little bit of his hand and a lot of his body. William Bedford will step to the free throw line. Memphis State and Louisville, both excellent free throw shooting teams. Bedford, a 64% shooter. Everybody else in the Memphis State starting lineup is shooting 80% plus. Six points now for Bedford. He's two for two today. All five Louisville starters averaging double figures and shooting 50% plus from the floor. And four of the five Memphis State starters are in double figures. And the other one, Dwight Boyd's at nine points, so... All 10 guys that started their day contribute heavily. 23-21, Memphis State. Ellison. Knocked away from behind by Alexander. Out of bounds for Louisville. Yeah, you know, except for the early part of this first half, we've really had a relatively error-free basketball game. Memphis State hasn't committed many turnovers at all. Thompson, except for those few he had early, really kind of calmed down, and now we've got a good basketball game going. Milt Wagner adjusting the Louisville offense now as Memphis State zones the inbounds. Jeff Hall had that shot. He's got to take it. Thompson had it deflected, picked it up. Back to Wagner, open, top of the circle, off the heel of the rim. Billy Thompson, bump, shoots, and scores. Billy Thompson has eight. And there goes the theory that Memphis State's going to shut him down this afternoon. They, we just mentioned in our pregame, Larry, that they've held him to an average of six points over the last five ball games, and he has eight already in this one. Well, I said earlier, if Louisville's going to have a good game today, they've got to get something out of Billy Thompson, and he has responded so far in this first half. So Thompson playing well. Last five games, he had shot just 31% against Memphis State, but he's going to get done here today. Turner against Hall. Askew against Hunt, against Crook. Holmes against Wagner scores. He took him right to the bucket. I'll tell you what, when you've got a challenge and you've got a guy like Baskerville Holmes on your club, just give it to him and get out of the way. Oh, nice dish back to Crook. Shot good. Herbert Crook has four. Boy, he was, that shot was contested strongly, but he got it off in traffic. 25-25 tie, 6.50 left in our first half. Oh, Bedford, nice pass to Holmes at the baseline, and he buries the jumper. He has 10. And we talked about his defensive ability. He can shoot it, too. <laughs> Baskerville, who had 14 in the last meeting with Louisville, has 10 points already in this one. There's the trap, and the foul is called. Holmes and Askew were both there, and they have called Askew for the foul. The first on Vincent Askew. Vincent Askew, among all the other things he's done so well, has not fouled out of the game. This year. This one comes with six minutes and 33 seconds left in our first half, and this ball game is living up to the advanced turnover so far in this ball game. And Larry, you mentioned that Louisville committed some very quickly, but this is all settled down now, and they're taking pretty good care of it. They really are. So far, seven turnovers for both clubs, and we've played. Uh, well, we got 6:33 left in the first half. You can see right here, 42% shooting for Louisville on 11 of 26, with 12 of 22 for Memphis State. Here's the offensive rebounding. Louisville with eight and Memphis State with two. And for the game, Louisville at both ends out rebounding Memphis State now 17 to nine. Herbert Crook, a tremendous offensive rebounder. 
has 81 offensive rebounds this year, two of them in this game. So he really helps Louisville on an offensive board. I'll tell you who else is helping right now is Billy Thompson. He's gotten several off of that offensive glass. And he has scored the eight points. So we mentioned that matchup in our pregame. And Thompson's winning. There, Hall gets one. He's one for four. Excuse me, he's two for five now. He has four points in this one. He's got to keep taking that shot. He's too good a shot to pass those up. He's got to have it. Bedford dribbling the ball. Wants some help now. Finds Andre Turner. Now they've got Crook out on the floor on Turner. He's saying, hey, wait a minute. i got a different guy I need to be guarding here. Turner down the lane. Thompson and Ellison might have gotten a hand on the shot. Well, that's just what Turner thinks of his ability. He can go anywhere. Herbert Crook comes back and scores at the other end, and he has a half dozen points. And Louisville has taken a two-point lead with 5.45 in the first half. Andre double team gets it to ask you. Good job by, job by ask you to get it up between those two Louisville defenders. Now Wagner's back out on Turner out front. Play something when you ask your score to guard the other teams. That's fine. Terrible. Just the third charge from Memphis State. Milt Wagner. Gotta have somebody to throw it to. Andre Turner got a hand on it. It's out of bounds. I want to tell you what, if he lets that ball go, it's going to go out of bounds, and Thompson's not going to be able to come up with it. Duke winning North Carolina, 68-62. That one has a little bearing in the league. Yes. Battle in the ACC today. White Boyd is back in the ballgame now, replacing Marvin Alexander from Memphis State. Purvis Ellison back outside to Jeff Hall. 2-3 zone defense now by Memphis State. Watch Louisville attack it. Bad lob right there by Wagner. I think that was intended for Ellison, but it kind of went to no man's land. Oh, nice dish from Askew. Down to Boyd, and a foul is called. Like Boyd upset with himself for not making that shot. That would have been a great shot if it had done it. Wagner, number 20, here is 17. Good move right here. You watch the pass. Good look left. Dish to the right. That's the way you want to run the break. Dwight Boyd going up on a good pass from Vincent Askew. Second foul on Mill Wagner. White Boyd steps to the free throw line. 6'3 sophomore from Kirby High School in Memphis. Maybe 2% shooter for the year and gets this one. He has five points this afternoon. That's what he had against Louisville the last week in January 9th. That one in Memphis. Memphis State North. They won all three meetings last year, including two of them here in Freedom Hall. Six points now for Boyd at a 29-29 time. Who got it? Turner. Andre Turner. Oh, nice pass inside, and Holmes couldn't get it down. And he commits the foul on the rebound try. Fred, that was a foul of frustration right there by Pastor Bill Holmes, because once he went up with it, there was no question he had a good angle. He just could not get the ball to go down. Look at Andre Turner. He's everywhere. At the quickest hands for a player, he may have the quickest hands of anybody in the country. He gets the ball inside to Holmes. Watch Holmes miss this little layup. Misses her tip and commits the foul. The other end of the floor. And if I'm watching the sophomore forward, Herbert Kirk as he steps in the line. Herbert Kirk with six points in this game. Two for two on the line, making three for three. Louisville has hit all four of their free throw attempts in this game. Memphis State has hit all five. You know, oh, Fred, we talk about a lot of unheralded players, and we talk about basketball at home for Memphis State. I think Herbert Cook might be the most unheralded player on Louisville's club. He does everything so well, just a sophomore. How does improve as anybody in this league this year? An outstanding job. They're average, he's averaging 11 points and six rebounds. 31-29, Louisville up by two right now. There have been seven ties and three lead changes already in this ballgame. Rule 32 left in first half action here. Memphis State attacking with solid poise right now. Boyd looking down at Askew. Couldn't get it to him. Andre says, let's restart it, guys. 14 seconds left in the shot clock. Askew. Now they got the right man inside, Bedford. Jumper, Boyd. Off the heel of the rim, Askew, strong offensive rebound, and he ties the ball game. First two points for Benson Askew, and a 31-31 tie. Four minutes left in first half action. Deflection by Askew, picked off by Hall, though, and saved for Louisville. Great. That was a good play by Billy Thompson. He just slapped the ball over to Jeff Hall to keep it alive. Thompson to Hall to Wagner for the jumper from long range good. Milt Wagner has eight points. Milt Wagner is back. 
He has recovered from last year's injury and playing so well down the stretch of this season. 33-31 Louisville. The seesaw continues. Turner for the tie. And got it. Andre has eight points. 3-24 left in the first half. You think we could arrange to have these guys play every weekend? How about just play the rest of the day and evening here and freedom all the way? <laughs> Billy Thompson. That's for the lead. Billy Thompson has 10. You know, if you're watching this basketball game, you're going to say, is anybody playing defense? The answer is yes. There is somebody with a hand in the face of everyone who is shooting, but they're just making great shots. Billy Thompson, who hit two for seven his last time out against Memphis State, has hit five out of six field goal attempts in the first half of this ball game. Now Memphis State looking for the tie. Down by two. 250 left in the first half. Andre Turner in the circle is going to take it. It's tied. Andre Turner has 10 points. Boy, this is some match. It's getting ridiculous. There's a great play every time up and down the court. Andre Turner ties it for Memphis State with 229 left in the first half now. And now the Tigers go back to a 2-3 zone. They'll attack it. You see Ellison and Crook on one side. Hall out there. Wagner's going to dribble the ball in a little while. This battle again for the Metro Conference Championship today. Crook contested. The ball deflected out of bounds. Shot blocked, and it belongs to Louisville under their basket. We have a timeout taken here. So we have a ball game. 214 left in first half action here at Louisville, Kentucky. And a 35. There's your situation. 35 all ties. You look at Dana Kirk in the Memphis State huddle. He has his club playing extremely well here on the road in Louisville today. Shooting is vastly improved for the Cardinals right now. They're up to 50%. Memphis State's at 52. Rebounding's to the edge, still to the edge of the Cardinals, 19 to 11. At one time, Memphis State had an eight-point lead very early in the first half, but Louisville fighting their way back into a tie. And yeah, the now guy, they have the ball. The guys have really carried them so far in the first half. have been Crook and Thompson for Louisville. And on the other side, it's been, without question, Turner and Holmes. Jeff Hall with the inbounds pass. Milt Wagner way outside. Memphis State in that zone on the inbounds. Hall's open. I'll tell you what, Askew gets out of, on him pretty quickly. Lob to Thompson a little too tall, and Askew takes it away. Askew to Turner. Andre on the wing is open. And now Andre Turner has a dozen points, and Memphis State goes back up by two. And the crowd very quiet right now in Freedom Hall. Wagner with Boyd behind him. And Memphis State playing well on the road here today, showing great poise. Herbert Crook off the wing, good. They're tied again, and Herbert Crook continues to play strongly for Louisville. He now has 10 points for the Cardinals. 131 up in the first half, and the Fisher just fell. It's a proud reaction here. Don Rutledge just went hit the floor as he went by the Memphis State bench. Bob Bedford in the lane, shot, good. Strong work by William Bedford. That was a nice catch, Larry. He has nine points. Fred, I cannot say enough complimentary things about the way these two clubs are playing. They're giving us as good a college basketball game as you'd want to watch. 39-37, Memphis State with a minute six left in the first half now. Looks like Bill Wagner's going to pull it out. I think Denny Crum wants to hold it and run a little clock. 26 on the shot clock, 57 on the game clock. Got Hall open. Wagner. Still 20 on the shot clock. Crook lobbed to Thompson deep. Had to come back in, and Bedford blocked his shot. Memphis State has it. 42 seconds left in the half. Boy, to Turner. Then he turned, thought he walked. Dana Kirk immediately off the bench, pointing one finger. He wants one shot. It is 39-37 Memphis State. You can see the clock. 29 seconds left in the half. Good idea right here. Now, they've got Louisville spread out right now, and you see Crook out there guarding Boyd. Turner's going to take control of it. Expect him now. Final 15 seconds. It's going to be he against Wagner. Got the return feed from Holmes. Long jumper. Good. And Andre Turner buries it from the top of the circle for his 14th point. And the inbounds pass will be... He's kicked out of bounds. It'll go back to Louisville. Two seconds left in the half now. Four-point lead, Memphis State. Milt Wagner, midcourt. Too strong. Had it over the backboard. 
We have seen a good half of basketball here at Freedom Hall. 41-37. Memphis State has taken the lead in a hard fought first half. They were up by eight early. Louisville came back to get the lead by two. They seesawed back and forth. Two guys have really gone at each other, and you look at Ellison, he's had an average first half. Average for him. You look at Bedford on the other side, I think he may have outplayed him a little bit in the first half. There have been some tremendous individual matchups, as you would imagine, on the court here in the first half of basketball that we've seen so far today. The battle again for the Metro Conference Championship and the Mississippi are going to be the first matchup in the tournament. And Southern Mississippi, headed by head coach M.K. Turk, what a job he's doing with this ball club down the stretch, Larry. He really has. He's played very well in this Metro Conference in the last month of the season. You see him right here on the inside. Gerardo Hinton, what strong play a freshman's been giving the Eagles so far this year. So Southern Mississippi will go against Cincinnati and Tony Yates, and Tony has his club playing very strongly at the end of the season. And this is a club that came into Louisville and beat Louisville here this year. Sophomore guard Roger McClendon leading the way for the Bearcats to this stage of the season. Florida State and Virginia Tech also a matchup. Florida State picking up the number six seed yesterday with a win over South Carolina. Virginia Tech, well, what a day they had. 38 from Del Curry again yesterday, but Joe Williams has the Seminoles, who have been a threat in the tournament the last two years, rolling again. P. Wade Barber, a newcomer. Good move right there. And there you see Charlie Moyer and his Virginia Tech club. They're playing pretty well. They've had a good year. This man right here, Del Curry, what a senior season he's having. At 38 points yesterday. And then South Carolina will play the loser of today's game, either Memphis State or Louisville, on Friday. Again, the winner sits out. They get the bye. But the loser of this game will take on South Carolina. Bill Foster's ball club. Bill battling at the end of the season to get his year turned back around again. Strong play here. You see Michael Foster getting the ball to sophomore guard Keith James. And the Gamecocks, even though they're going to be the last seed in this tournament, are certainly a threat to handle some people here today or in this tournament next weekend. So that was the way they'll match up in the tournament next weekend. Again, that number one seeding is what they're determining here today. And we're at halftime. Memphis State establishing that eight-point lead early and watching Louisville fight their way back to lead. Their lead changes and ties all over the place in the first half of basketball here. Statistically, there's the way it went. It really went pretty well for both ball clubs. I don't think either coach could find strong fault with many of the numbers here, Larry. How'd you like to shoot 50% and be behind at home at halftime? That's what Louisville is right now. The free throw shooting percentage is terrific. Five of six, five of five. Rebounding margin to the Cardinals, 19 to 11. The turnovers only three for Memphis State in that first half. Team fouls, pretty small figure for both clubs. Memphis State scoring individually. Andre Turner, the point guard, leading the way with 14 points. Baskerville Holmes opened things very strongly for Memphis State here today. He has 10. There's great balance in there. Bedford 9, Boyd 6. Nobody in foul trouble. Very important halftime point. And Louisville scoring just as balanced. Crook and Thompson 10 apiece. Wagner at 8. Ellison 5. Hall at 4. And no Cardinal in foul trouble at halftime. You know, although Ellison only had 5 points in that first half, he also had 5 rebounds, and that led the Cardinals in the first half. Fans of all ages enjoying basketball here today. The Metro Conference regular season championship game is at halftime. We'll be back. After this word, team taking the floor for the second half. You have to wonder what both coaches talked about. You can't think of very many major adjustments anybody want to make in this thing. Not so far. Uh, I think maybe in the second half, they need to get Ellison a little bit more involved in the offense for Louisville. Memphis State up by four and in possession of the ball. Andre Turner. Baskerville Holmes. Billy Thompson coming out to cover. Ball deflected off the hands of Andre Turner out of bounds. And it belongs to Louisville. Kind of funny little play right there. Yeah, it really was. Dana Kirk came off the bench and told Baskerville Holmes not to throw it to Turner over there. He wanted it to go to Boyd on the other side. I think Andre was expecting the pass. Ellison, Bedford giving a little bit of room. Thompson going down low, taking Holmes low, and he's fouled by Baskerville Holmes. That's the second foul on Baskerville. And Fred, that's the matchup we talked about in the first half and also at the top of the show, the fact that Baskerville Holmes has been able to shut down Billy Thompson. This time, Thompson victimizes Holmes on the inside. He gets the ball, turns, goes strong to the basket. You see the foul committed by Baskerville Holmes. Shooting foul. Billy Thompson on the line for the first time today. Ten first half points for Thompson, the 6'7 senior from Camden, New Jersey. And it fell out of the rim. That's about as deep as a basketball can go down in and not stay there. He's the only Louisville player ever to be in the top ten in three categories, scoring, rebounding, and assists. Missed them both. Billy Thompson unable to get a free throw down. And it's still a four-point Memphis State lead. Turner to Boyd to Turner. Milt Wagner out covering him. All has Boyd. Thompson has Askew. 
But for the of course, the matchup in the middle. Nice work by Dwight Boyd. He has eight points and a six-point lead to Memphis State. And immediately Memphis State goes into that full court pressure. They've got Crook, Thompson, and Wagner for Louisville down court. Now they've got it to Ellison up court. Ellison to Milt Wagner off the circle. Good. Milt Wagner has 10. A lot of those Fred have been from long range, too. That's a good sign for Louisville. Have another good long range shooter to go with Hall in there. Andre Turner works against Wagner at the other end. You think Mills got some responsibility, score at one end, guard Turner at the other. Other than that, he doesn't have to do this afternoon. Look at Holmes. Oh, what an acrobatic shot. He got off the double tip by Bedford. Won't fall. Crook had it and now gets to Billy Thompson. Thompson's got Ellison over Bedford. Seven points for Purvis Ellison. They've got to get Ellison involved in the offense, and that's what Billy Thompson just did. He got it to his big center in the middle. Really did a sliding, kind of moving a little bit. He didn't just turn and go right over Bedford. Shot it on the move. And Bedford scored. wants it lobbed over Ellison's head. He wants the ball to go back to the wing and get the lob. There it is. He'd like to have a chance to answer that two points and help from Billy Thompson on the deflection that time. Louisville forcing the turnover on the lob. Wagner against Turner. Ellison needs to move it in the lane. Boyd with a rebound for Memphis State to Andre Turner. Turner on the wing with a long jumper. Good. Andre Turner has 16 points in this contest. Well, what a basketball game Andre Turner is playing here this afternoon. Ellison deflected by Askew. <laughs> Vincent trying to solve one of the officials on the fact that Hall had touched it. Didn't make the sale. You know, oftentimes those players in college basketball today point the other way immediately when it happens. Those officials, they're not buying that. Andre Turner contesting the inbounds pass, but Wagner has it to Hall. Boyd defends. Hall chasing down the lane. Ellison. Wagner off the baseline. Turner shuts him down. How about that for a play, Fred? Andre Turner got the ball on the way up. Wagner tried to control it and slapped it out of bounds. Couldn't even take care of it because Turner was right in his face. 45-41 Memphis State. Turner against Wagner. Boyd down inside the Holmes. Oh, what a strong job he did of getting it up. Crook was defending in there, and a foul is going to be called against Herbert Crook. That'll be his second. It was good help by Crook coming across to help with Holmes, but he was there too late. Then he crumb off the bench right there. You see him standing up in front of his bench. He was trying to indicate to the officials that perhaps his defensive player, Crook, was just standing there with arms extended. Baskerville having a good game. Ten points in the contest of this juncture. 82% free throw shooter. The senior from Westwood High School in Memphis. For this Memphis ball club. Such a hometown player. Doing from elsewhere. I'll tell you when they end the 85-86 season we'll again next fall, October the 15th, Baskerville Holmes is going to be greatly missed by Dana Kirk. Yes. Andre Turner got a hand on it, could not quite control it. He's a little upset with himself because he couldn't find the handle. Well, he's doing everything for this team. I want everybody out there in TV to understand there is only one Andre Turner on the floor. You may see him in about 20 different <laughs> locations, but there's just one Andre Turner. Thompson blocked by Bedford to ask you. The Tigers up by six. Oh, what a great dish inside in a foul call. Askew got the feed to Boyd and the foul call. Fred, that was just outstanding play by Memphis State. A great rejection by Bedford on one end. They got the break initiated. What just blocked right here by Bedford? Thompson tries to go up. Throws the ball back out. Memphis State starts that break. Look at Askew controlling the basketball. Watch his dish to the right side. What a great pass. Bedford's first block today, but he is a shot blocker. That's his 76th block of the year. He and Ellison have each blocked 76 shots this year. How's that for a matchup? White boy now with nine points. Seven-point lead, Memphis State. And now they match their biggest lead in the first half at eight. 16-47 left in the game. The Tigers playing very strongly on the road here at Freedom Hall. Thompson baseline to Crook to Ellison. Boy, you could see that one coming. Ellison saw the opening, floated right down the middle of the lane, and they threw it up there, and he grabbed it out of the clouds and jammed it through. Ellison had his back to us, but I saw Crook's eyes get big, and he knew what was coming. Six-point lead, Memphis State. Now the crowd's starting to make noise here at Freedom Hall. 
Tiger came not rattling at all. Great poise. Foul in the middle. Thompson was holding Baskerville home. There's foul on Thompson. Kenny Crum selling back onto the Cardinal bench. Louisville's going to stay in that zone defense when Memphis State brings it in. Good play. Boy, couldn't can it. Jeff Ball pulls it down. Thompson. Ellison. Oh, he had a notion, didn't take the shot. Now, is it going to? Yes, he is. The jump fell off the side of the lane, and he's fouled by Bedford. Curtis couldn't quite make up his mind whether to shoot the thing or not. And Bedford draws his second foul of the afternoon. Well, imagine there are a lot of players that go out there and look at William Bedford and they can't make up their mind whether or not they're going to take the shot or not. Curtis Ellison, nine points in this game. Is it? Once you look around, now he decides to make a move to the right side, and there's the foul committed by Bedford. Ellison to the line now for two shots. There's only, only one missed free throw in the first half, Lori, but the problem was in the second half. Boy, Thompson's over two. Now the Louisville over three as a team. <laughs> Purvis Ellison has ten points. It's a six-point lead. Make it a five-point lead now to Memphis State. And we have timeout taken here. This one coming with 15 minutes and 51 seconds. Scoring so far in this one. Memphis State with 26. Turner with 14. White Boyd with 12. Louisville has 14 points out of there. Milt Wagner has ten of them. Jeff Hall, four. Forcing points on turnovers. Memphis State is pitching a shutout. Well, right now, that eight-point uh, differential on those points from turnovers has helped them get this five-point lead with 15-51 to go in the second half. <laughs> the fan joining in the celebration here. There have been 11 ties and four lead changes so far in this ballgame. Louisville leading this series 34-17, but Memphis State has won the last four, including the first matchup this year. In Memphis, 73-71. Louisville had fouls on the free throw that night, hitting only 9 out of 17. While Memphis State can 23 of 27. You know, 16 of the 51 games in this series have been decided by 5 points or less. Crook strongly back. Memphis State up by 5. Louisville trying to whittle it down. Louisville, Louisville seems like they're trying to concentrate on moving the ball inside a little bit more. With Ellison out top, they move Crook and Thompson in there, and he's been looking for them. Pretty good offense. They get Bedford away from the inside, which is their top shot rejector. When he's out there controlling the ball, Ellison is. Bedford goes out. That frees Crook and Thompson inside. Drop it down inside to Thompson. You called it. Nice call. Yeah. 12 points, Billy Thompson. Pretty good strategy, Fred. I think on the part of Denny Crum to do it that way on the offensive end. Three-point lead now for Memphis State. Bob the Bedford turnaround jump hook. Nope. Tip Holmes. Nope. Two. He got it again. Baskerville Holmes goes up and rams it down, and he has 14 points. Can we talk about Andre Turner being a competitor? Put Baskerville Holmes in that same category. And Askew and Boyd and Bedford and Hall and Wagner and Ellison and Thompson and all of them. And Crook, who just took it away. Oh, he stepped on the end line. It goes back to Memphis State. The entire Louisville cheerleading corps objecting to the call that happened right in front of him. This Louisville cheerleaders, national champions. <laughs> Only on cheerleading, not on referee. <laughs> they rose to their feet as a unit and objected to the call. 51-46, Memphis State, the Tigers with the ball. Saw a bumper sticker a while back. I'll tell you about it in a minute. Bedford shot a, what a nice shot by William Bedford, and he has 11. Larry, the bumper sticker said, are we having fun yet? The answer is yes, we are. We're having a good time today. And we've had it since the opening minute of this game. Memphis State up He's by got a hall. Wouldn't fall for it. Look at Thompson. Billy Thompson with a strong offensive rebound. 14 points for Billy Thompson. Somebody forgot about Thompson and keeping him away from that basket. He snuck in there, got a good, strong offensive rebound and a stick back. Five-point lead for Memphis State. Still a long way to go. 13-40 left in this game. White Boyd. Crowd now yelling for defense. Bedford, nice catch along the baseline. Back outside, Andre Turner. And Holmes and Thompson shoving down along the lane. Good penetration and dish. Oh, yes, and they missed it. 
Look at Baskerville Holmes. And he tips again, can't get it. Crook and Ellison are there, and Ellison takes it away. Boy, Baskerville really doing a number on the boards right now. And a great job right there by Ellison and Crook to come up with a basketball. They almost killed each other off trying to get it. Ellison, Ellison. Inside. Down the lane. fighting their way back now. Memphis State turns it over. Now that Cardinal contingency has got something to cheer about. They just got a turnover, a chance to get within one. Baskerville Holmes going to get a little breather. He's been working hard out here. He's going to the bench for a few minutes. Marvin Alexander is in for Memphis State. Here's the trap at midcourt. They knock it loose. It's out of bounds in Louisville basketball. Right will say, hey, you got me on the arm. Watch this trap at midcourt right here. Milt Wagner, no place to go. He's got Boyd and Turner all over him right there. Boyd just barely touched that ball, went out of bounds. Memphis State changes defense as they go now to a zone. Thompson in the wing. Wagner called at a tough shooting day so far, and that one's a little bit off mark. Paul having a very difficult afternoon shooting from the field. He is two for eight. Andre Turner got it very softly. Bedford had it. Brick takes it away. You mentioned it earlier, though, all right, Paul has to keep shooting. He's two for eight in this game. But his reputation is he is a good shooter. We know that. But it's like he's not having his day today. All on the wing again. Wagner, he's having a good shooting day. Buries it. Ball points, Milt Wagner. One point lead, Memphis State. That brought him to their feet. Milt Wagner, six for 12. Bedford's there. Took it off the glass and scores. And William Bedford has 13 points. The Tigers of Memphis State up by three. 11 just, 20 left in the game. Just another one of those weapons in that arsenal of Memphis State. Good dish by Hall to Ellison. Ellison buries the short jumper. Ellison, you mentioned at halftime, they've got to get him involved. Nine second half points for Ellison now. 14 in the game. And Fred, that's the reason they're just down by one right now in the second half. They've got him involved in the offense. Bedford's going to take it again. And a foul is called. Yes. Ellison. Oh, was against Bedford. The foul was against Bedford. It's Look at Dana Bedford. Kirk. They called the foul against Bedford. You want to see a great matchup? We talked about it at the top of the show. Watch these two centers go after each other. There's Ellison trying to find his way around. That's the end of the play right there. Bedford had pushed off prior to that. Paul Hausman with the call. Bedford very unhappy. We have a break in the action in Freedom Hall. 10.59 left in the game. We'll be back after these messages. Watch it right a frame right here. You're going to see Ellison right there with Bedford really working on each other. Bedford made the push off right there. Watch Ellison trying to fight his way around to the front so he won't let the ball come in. Now he moves to the backside. Paul Hausman, the official, felt like Bedford had pushed off to get the advantage. And you see the call right there. And you saw Milt Wagner's reaction. And here's a reaction by Dana Kerr. Well, what a matchup. 55-54, Memphis State, Louisville with the basketball and a chance to regain the lead with 10.54 left to play. Billy Thompson. That foul is against Marvin Alexander. His second. Baskerville Holmes still getting a breather. Watch Thompson right here. He takes it inside. He has some ideas of maybe going up with a shot here, but sees he can't get anything off, so he goes up and dumps it off to Ellison on the inside. You see the foul committed right there by Marvin Alexander. Alexander, a freshman, playing strongly off the bench all year. Especially the last two ball games. The last two games, he's averaged eight points and seven rebounds. Wagner from the deep corner. In and out. Ellison had a hand on it. Taken out of there by Memphis State. Boyd had it. And it's going to be out of bounds to Louisville. 
on the jump ball. The possession belongs to the Cardinals. You know, Fred, oftentimes in a game like this, when you've got so many players playing above the rim, they kind of nullify each other, and the ball bounces around and comes down, and oftentimes you get a lot of those balls that come down and around the floor. Embro shot no. Billy Thompson, strong offensive rebound, but not in that situation. 16 points for Billy Thompson. And Louisville back in front by one. Good lob to Bedford inside, and he missed it. Look at Crook. Herbert Crook takes it over. Billy Thompson is at 8 out of 10 shots. Jerry West says there's too much noise here for me. <laughs> Don't like it. 14 for Wagner. Great point lead for Louisville. Believe it or not, their biggest margin of the ballgame. Cardinals have turned it around, and they've done it with second half shooting. 7 of 14 so far for Wagner in the game. Memphis State needs a basket here badly. They need to reassert themselves. Boyd on the move. Oh, what a move. Murray, he's a good shooter moving like that. Dozen points for Boyd now. Big bucket for Memphis State. Gets him back within one. Steadies him up a little bit. Danny Crum talking his club. Has his offense right in front of him. And he's adjusting it here right now. Milt Wagner wide open. In and out. Askew with the rebound. Here come the Tigers. Want some help. White Boyd gets it to Andre Turner. Wagner takes Turner. Well, they leave Alexander all alone, and the shot doesn't fall for him. Crook with a big, strong rebound. He's doing a number on the boards right now. Crook and Thompson have done everything off of that glass. Milt Wagner got an air ball. Rebounded by Bedford. They're out on the break. Three on one against Wagner. They drop it back to Boyd, and it's going to be a violation. Traveling. Called against Memphis State. Jerry West still can't stand the noise in Freedom Hall. Somebody get him some earplugs. <laughs> Should have brought some cotton today. 8.44 left in the contest. Well, you don't want to miss those three and one opportunities in a game like this very often. I don't know why I asked you didn't take the ball in and just go ahead and lay it up. Foul against Marvin Alexander, his third. 8.35, left in the ball game. Dana Kirk has watched his team play very strongly here. Louisville, though, in the second half, coming from eight back now to take the lead. Louisville has committed three team fouls in the second half. Memphis State, five. Not a shooting foul. Milt Wagner picks up the inbounds pass. They work against a Memphis State zone. Thompson on one wing. Wagner at the top. Kimbrough's on the wing. There's Ellison. Near the lane. Good. 16 points for Ellison. 11 of them in the second half. Larry Conley mentioned at halftime they needed to get Ellison more involved than they have. Now the foul goes against Thompson. That's his second. You know, the thing that I think right now Memphis State needs to do, Fred, they need to get back and control this basketball game, and the way they're going to have to do that is get the ball into the hands of Andre Turner. He's really been quiet the last six or eight minutes. We haven't heard a lot out of him. Most of the play has been going on in the inside. I think if Memphis State's going to reassert themselves, as I said earlier, they've got to let the little guy take charge, and that's Turner. Alexander misses on the free throw line. Well, we haven't talked much about the two coaches in the ball game. Dana Kirk in his seventh year with a record of 155 and 55 at Memphis State. Then he crowns 15th year, 361 and 114. So the coaching outstanding on both benches. 60 58, Louisville by two with eight minutes left in the game. Brooke alone on the baseline. Turns it down. So surprised he didn't take that shot. He was wide open. He didn't even look for it. Wagner will. Kimbrough, Paul's having trouble shooting at that spot, and Kimbrough comes off the bench to pick him up. You know, in most cases, they've got Jeff Hall in against those zone defenses, but he's not having a good shooting day, so they've got Kimbrough in there instead. They get it low. Alexander. Blocked by Ellison. Wagner and Kimbrough against Turner. Wagner in the lane. The shot is no good. 
Alexander, nice slap up court. Who's got it? Nobody. Now they do. Three on none. Watch this. 15 points for William Bedford. And the Tigers back. Good action. Both clubs going after the ball. I thought Milt Wagner was going to come up with it, but he wasn't able to. And Memphis State got the jam. 62-60. Louisville. And now we could have a tie. Memphis State. Andre Turner is going to race down the lane. Blocked by Kimbrough and a foul call. Andre Turner is all right. Passes to his feet. Memphis State bench. Larry Finch, a great player at Memphis State in his own right. This is Dana Kirk. Running the effort. Foul over there also. Third foul on Kimbrough. You want to talk about the leaping ability right here. Look at Kimbrough come from the other side, but also up in the air is that little guy, Andre Turner. Foul committed by Kimbrough or Wagner. Either one could have gotten it. Jeff Hall back on the floor now for Louisville. Billy Thompson takes a breather. Andre Turner, first attempt at the free throw line today, has 16 points in this game. And now, this free throw for the top. With 6.58 left in the game. Folks, you, those of you who are watching at home today, go call your friends and tell them to tune in for the last 6.58 because we're going to get a good one here. A great finish. Andre Turner has 18. They gather around Kirk Stanger. The Memphis Tigers back to their bench with a break in the action. 6.58 left in the game. 62-62 tie. Well, Duke wins the Tobacco Leaf in the battle for the number one spot in the nation right now. 82-74. The Dukies handled North Carolina in Durham today. Cameron Indoor Stadium must have been rocking with that one. And in the Big Ten, Indiana gets Iowa 80-73. Bobby Knight's ball club playing for the Big Ten championship, continuing to play well. Denny Crum still talking to his ball club. 62-62 tie here for the Metro Conference Championship. Louisville and Memphis State with 6.58 left in the game. Biggest lead of the day has been eight points. Memphis State's been there a couple of times. Louisville's biggest lead has been four. The reason, Fred, is Louisville's picked up that field goal percentage shooting in the second half. They're shooting 57% while they were shooting 50. Memphis State has fallen off. They're only shooting 41% in the second half. Tigers hitting just seven of 17 shots in the second half. Louisville out rebounding them 11 tonight. Memphis State with that full court pressure again. Holmes up front with Boyd and Turner. Kimbrough takes Askew down the lane. The basket fell, and Kimbrough's called for a charge. Will they count the bucket? They do. Give Tony Kimbrough his fourth point of the afternoon. Give Louisville a two-point lead and charge Kimbrough with his fourth foul. Well, what a good offensive move by Tony Kimbrough to go baseline that time and get that basket. He did get the charge, but he did get the basket, and that's important. Four fouls on Kimbrough. A little housekeeping for you here. Team fouls. Louisville 6, Memphis State 5. The arrow on a held ball would belong to Memphis State. 6.38 left in the game. Louisville up by two. Well, Memphis State really looking to the inside now. They're going to try to take advantage of Kimbrough. Holmes wants the ball, but Turner's going to take the shot. And now Holmes had a hand on it, couldn't hold it. It's out of bounds to Memphis State as Tony Kimbrough couldn't find the handle and took it out of bounds. Stack offense down inside. Memphis State was going to try to free somebody. Let's see if they try to uh, take advantage of Kimbrough. Looks like Askew is going to be down inside. Oh, they got it. him wide open. The shot doesn't go. Louisville almost tipped it in inadvertently. They have the ball. Kimbrough. There were two Cardinals there, and they almost tipped it in. Louisville up by two, 5.55 to play. We're getting to the stage of the game where things begin to get magnified now. Every place seems a little larger than it did earlier. Bill Wagner now looking over that Memphis State zone defense. He's got Hall on one side, Crook on the other. Kimbrough's in the corner, and Ellison seems to be floating back and forth through the lane. There's Crook. Baskerville holds with a strong rebound for Memphis State. Tigers another chance to tie it. Boyd down low. Askew in and out. He's having some tough shooting down inside. There is missed two from in close. Wagner has it for Louisville. Tough miss right there for Memphis State. They had a good shot. You see the clock at the top of your screen. There's the score. All 
on the wing. Cook. Got his own tip. They're trying to keep it alive. Turner takes command. Three on one against Wagner. He's got Bedford on one side. Now he almost lost control, and the ball belongs to Louisville. Andre got in the air, and Bedford didn't see the ball coming. Andy Kirk says, let's just take it easy. Andy Crumb says, let's take time out. So the Cardinals are going to call the timeout here. First called timeout by either coach in this basketball game. Four minutes, 50 seconds left in the contest. Louisville with the basketball leading by two, and we'll be back after these messages from your local stations. This is the Raycom. We mentioned earlier that the Metro Conference Tournament here next weekend at Freedom Hall is sold out, but Raycom Sports has your ticket for you. Saturday and Sunday, we'll be here. Semifinal action on Saturday afternoon. The championship game on Sunday here on the Raycom Sports Network. Memphis State down two points right now, 64-62. Part of that reason is the fact they've only hit on seven of 21 field goal attempts, 33% in the second half. New Freedom Hall attendance record set here today. 19,582 are watching this game. They set the old record earlier this year when Indiana played here, 19,483. Louisville, two-point lead in the ball. Purvis Ellison, Holmes defending him. Andre Turner got a hand on it. The battle is on for the loose ball. Kimbrough has it, dishes to Hall. Well, I wonder if Jeff Hall might be just passing up some shots right now for fear that, well, I haven't had a good afternoon. I don't think I can get it going. Hey, wait a minute. He was uh, two for eight, takes that one and misses a little bit. Off the mark. So he's two for nine. Good point, Larry. Askew missed his last two shots. Bedford gets the ball back for him, though, as he lost the handle on it that time. 4-10 left in the ball game. Memphis State hunting the tie. Deflected by Wagner, saved by Turner. You can't make a clean pass in this game. Somebody's got a hand on it. The lob to Holmes. Oh, what a nice soft grab inside by Holmes, and he has 16 points. The game is tied. What set that up was a good screen by Boyd at the top of the circle, and that freed Holmes to roll down the middle of the lane to get that lob. Soft hands, huh? There are a couple of soft hands on both of these clubs. 64-64 tie. Wagner unties it. 16 points, Milt Wagner, 3.33 left in the game. Kimbrough in there against Holmes. Holmes trying to get the basketball. He knows Kimbrough's got four fouls on him. Bedford over Ellison. That's Holmes again. Oh, what a strong effort he's giving Memphis Day today. The count wouldn't fall, but he drew the foul. That's going to be number five on Tony Kimbrough. I see a strong effort here. Pastor Mahomes having a great afternoon to play. Look at Askew right here. He's got it. He looks inside. Watch this lob right in here to Baskerville Holmes. Tony Kimbrough has fouled out. Herbert Crook also coming out of the game, just taking a breather for Louisville. Jeff Hall, Billy Thompson, Fergus Ellison. No Wagner out there right now. There's not discussion only is going on over at the Louisville bench with one of the officials. Swain's getting ready to come into the game. He's been injured, has had some damage ligaments in his left knee. But the minute he stood up and took on his warm-ups, the crowd started to applaud here. Well, the question is, can he get his warm-up suit off to get out there? <laughs> He's having some problems getting it done. This is the ovation as he comes in. But Swain, a 6'7 junior from Atlanta, Georgia. He's laughing on that left knee. Now, as soon as he gets on the floor, he calls a timeout. That was what Denny Crane was telling him when he sent him out. So Denny Crum wants to talk it over with his ball club. 3-14 left in this game. Louisville leading 66-64. You're going to see right here. Look at Askew right here. Let's watch this play one more time. Good lob to the inside and great catch by Baskerville Holmes. 
16 points and seven rebounds. Fred, we highlighted him at the top of the show and we talked about his defensive ability, but he's done a little bit of everything for them today. He's had a great afternoon for the Memphis State Tigers. Each one of these teams with some great veterans are 3,000 point scorers in each lineup here today. For Memphis State, Baskerville Holmes, William Bedford, and Turner all have a thousand in their careers. Billy Thompson, Milt Wagner, and Jeff Hall for Louisville, all thousand point scorers. Well, he's a great compliment to the Metro Conference. I think the chances of them getting three teams in the NCAA tournament are almost a cinch. They've got Virginia Tech, who's had a great year also, and there's no question these two clubs are going to be right there. Hokie set a score record with a 20-second victory yesterday. Downing Cincinnati is... Baskerville Holmes. He is now 3 for 3 on the line with 17 points. 82% shooter going for the tie for the Tigers right here. Loops it in and out. Boy, trying to keep it alive, but taken away by McSwain. One point lead, Louisville. Three minutes, seven seconds left. You, know, you can't relax for a second out there. Somebody's got a hand in there slapping the ball or deflecting a pass. Always something going on, some activity between these two clubs. Good defensive players. Thompson, Hall. They put Hall at the point right now. The wings belong to Thompson and Wagner. Jeff Hall, two for nine, shooting in this ball game. He's going to direct the offense for a while. And Wagner have almost switched positions here for the moment against the zone. Wagner having a good shooting day. Lob to Ellison. Shoots over Bedford. Oh, Purvis Ellison. 13 second half points. 18 in the game. Louisville by three. And that was not the easiest of shots. What they have to do is shoot it over a seven-footer, and now Memphis State wants a timeout. Dana Kirk calling timeout for the first time today. Benny Crum is used to. They are excited in Freedom Hall. Four seconds left. Louisville up by three. Throw shooting here today. Memphis State, the visiting team, has been on the line seven more times. Each team has missed three. Memphis State with a great free throw shooting ability. So shooting 73% of the team shooting well. Louisville also a good free throw shooting team. 72% as a team. And over the last four minutes, the Cardinals shooting 82%. <laughs> the youngster there. There's the situation. Cardinals lead by three. say they put a charge in this Cardinal group. These fans are ready for this final two minutes and 20 seconds. But again, don't overlook the tremendous poise of this Memphis State ball club. Look at Holmes. Yes. Baskerville oh. Holmes. What a day he's having here. 19 points for Holmes. One point lead Louisville. 2.03 left in the game. Billy Thompson against Holmes. Wagner almost lost it, but has it. Milt Wagner got hit in the face. I thought Paul Hausman was going to stop play there for a minute. There's Ellison again, back up top. Jeff Hall. Memphis State now in the man-to-man -man defense. Watch Ellison look inside to Thompson right there. There's the foul. It's going to go against Baskerville Holmes, holding Billy Thompson in the lane. The third foul on Baskerville Holmes. Fred, they've gone back to that offensive alignment that they went to in the early part of the second half with Ellison coming out up top. That way he pulls Bedford away from the basket and it gives the ball an opportunity to go inside to McSwain and Thompson. Billy Thompson will handle the inbounds pass. That was the sixth team foul on Memphis State. From here on out, both teams will be in the one and one. The arrow on a held ball belongs to Memphis State. 138 left in the game. Louisville up by one with the basketball. He's very patient about the shot they're going to take. That's a strange pass. Yes. Wagner just lobbed it over Boyd's head into Ellison's hands. 21 seconds on the shot clock. Taking a lot of time looking over this Memphis State zone defense. 110 left in the game. 12 on a shot clock deflection. Memphis State has the ball. Askew deflected the pass, and Turner picked it up, and the Tigers could go in front. One minute left in the game. Memphis State down by one. Askew's on the baseline. Goaltending is going to be the call. Two points. 
Jim Vincent Askew his fourth point of the ball game. Oh, Memphis State oh, with a one point lead and 52 oh, seconds to play. Good break by Askew. Baseline to get that shot off. Look at this shot here, right here. Good catch. Turner with a great pass. Rejection by Thompson, but it's goaltending. Good look by Turner inside. Time out, Memphis State. That is their second 69-68, Memphis State, 52 seconds to play. And both coaches now with an opportunity to talk to their ball club. We are coming down to it here at Freedom Hall. Sun Trump. Denny Crum. Talking to his ball club, Louisville, coming into this game, 23 and 7 on the year, ranked 13, 9 and 2. 49 years old today, probably has forgotten right now that it is his birthday. The only thing he's concentrating on right now is that play that he's drawing up and hoping that his players are going to absorb everything he's saying. This has been about as much fun for, of a basketball game to watch, not only as an announcer, but as a spectator as you could possibly want to see. These are the kind of games, if you're a competitor and you're an athlete, you love to play in these kind of games. Dana Kirk in the Memphis State Hall, his club, 25 and 3, ranked eighth in the nation, 9 and 2 in the Metro. This is for the Metro Conference Championship. Memphis State with a one point lead, 52 seconds to go, and Louisville with a basketball. Now it becomes a matter of execution. You can talk about the statistics all you want to, and now it becomes the final 52 seconds of execution. Whoever executes the best is going to win the game. Ellison picks up the inbounds pass. He doesn't want the ball. Starts the dribble anyway. Holmes is with him, and he gets it up to Milt Wagner. Outside to Hall. Memphis State zone. 2-3. Thompson, Wagner, Hall. Hall's on one wing and open. Wagner's there. He's two for nine on the day. Now they come out to shut him off. 29 seconds left in the game. Wagner. The battle for the ball. Ellison shot blocked. Memphis State has the lead in the ball. 17 seconds to play. Ball deflected by Hall out of bounds. Memphis State ball with 14 seconds to play. Ellison's shot was blocked along the baseline. And the Tigers have the lead in the basketball. Jeff Hall was bitterly complaining that he was held by Askew when he went after the basketball after it had been knocked away. It'll be to no avail. Memphis State, the team that won twice here in Freedom Hall last year, up by a point in possession of the ball now. And Larry, you got a real problem if you think of somebody to foul for Memphis State. We've talked about what a great free throw shooting team they are. Bedford's a 64% free throw shooter, but he's not likely to touch the ball until they get to the end. Everybody else on the floor from Memphis State shooting 80% or better. Well, the thing you got to ask yourself right now, there are a lot of coaches in the country who will take this uh, chance. Do you go foul, foul Bedford? Do you go grab him and say, I'll give him my chances with two shots from him than I would from a one-and-one one from a guy who's shooting 80%? That's what they've got to ask themselves. If they go after those 80% free throw shooters, chances are pretty good they're going to make them because they can shoot them. Fouling, of course, the second option. They'd like to prevent the inbounds basket of steal. I'm sure some are saying, look, all Memphis State's got to do is get an inbounds and kill 14 seconds. First of all, it's probably going to be tough to get an inbounds. Secondly, 14 seconds can be an eternity when you've got the lead. Well, I can guarantee you that that's not going to happen. And, uh, Louisville's not going to allow that basketball to come across that midcourt without fouling. If they can't get the steal right in from the out-of-bounds play, they'll foul immediately. Dana Kirk has set his strategy. Likewise, Denny Crump. We're down to 14 seconds for the Metro Conference Championship. The winner gets the bye in the tournament here next weekend. Strong efforts from both clubs here today. Courageous effort, Memphis State, playing on the road in front of this record crowd in Freedom Hall. 19,582 has grabbed the lead. Bedford wants timeout again. Dana Kirk took a look at Denny Clem's defense and called his third timeout. Again, the Metro Conference Tournament here next weekend. It begins on Friday with three games. The winner of this one gets the bye, and the loser will play South Carolina on the first day. Three games on Friday. 
doubleheader Saturday afternoon, semifinal action, and the championship game on Sunday. And remember, the Raycom Sports Network will be here for both games on Saturday afternoon and the championship game on Sunday. What an exciting year it's been in the Metro. Fred, it's really an important factor you just talked about. Uh, the ability to be able to win this conference championship and get that first round by really gives your kids a lot of a, a lot better break. They get a chance to relax a little bit. They only have to play two games to win the championship. Otherwise, if you uh, finish second in this league and on down, you have to play three games to win the conference championship. Can they come? question of his assistant coaches as he talks to his team. Talking to Bobby Dodson. Great Houston over there. Let's drive it down the floor. Let's see if they come out and line up exactly the same way that they, uh, before they call the timeout, Memphis State does. They had Boyd and Turner down on the free throw line, just to, to the left of it. I would assume Askew is going to take the ball out of bounds. Important how they line up right here, because they saw how Louisville was going to line up. They were going to front them. All right, they got Holmes on here on the left side at midcourt. They're going to go down inside, and again, it's going to be Turner and Boyd right at the free throw line to the left of it. Bedford's going to take the ball out of bounds. So they put Askew and Holmes right at midcourt. Up front, you've got Boyd and Turner. Let's see what happens. Good fronting, good fronting. They got the turnover. Oh! It was a loose ball, and Askew picks it up, and now they get it to Andre Turner. Eight seconds left and a foul. Herbert Cook has fouled Andre Turner with eight seconds left in the game. The ball was loose for a moment, and Askew picked it up for Memphis State. The foul on Cook, his fourth, Andre Turner, who's two for two on the line, an 86% free throw shooter, will step to the line here. But they had their chance. It was a loose ball. Dana Kirk saying to his club, don't foul. Andre Turner, eight for 14 from the floor. Two for two at the line. And now Denny Clemens going to take a timeout. So the strategy battle intense, as has been the basketball battle here at Freedom Hall today. There you see the clock behind it. Eight seconds left. And Larry, a word about the three officials in this ballgame. Paul Galvin, Paul Houseman, Don Rutgers. Outstanding job here today. They really have done a great job. And I tell you what, it is very difficult to officiate a basketball game when you've got the players that caliber of a Memphis State and Louisville who play above the basket all the time. You know, years ago, the game used to play, be played below the basket. Now you've got so many players who go out there and play above it. It really takes a concerted effort on the part of all three officials to keep up with this basketball game. I can't uh, pass out enough applause to these three guys because I think they've done a great job. 69-68, Memphis State. Andre Turner will have the two free throws, or rather the one and one coming when we come back. And you know, depending on what Turner does with these free throws really dictates the strategy of the Cardinals. Denny Crum over there trying to map out what he's going to do with regard to what Turner does at the free throw line. Bring it down here, get it before the guys get the ball in the basket. You've got to take a timeout. If they don't fight, we get the three point play. I don't think they'll fight. Denny continues to set the strategy. Dana Kirk, of course, working just as hard in the other huddle for the Memphis State Tigers. You've got to believe with the evening that, or the afternoon that uh, Wagner has had, once that ball goes out of bounds and comes up court, I've got to believe Wagner is going to go one-on-one -on -one with whoever it is he's guarding. I've got to believe Memphis State knows that also. Let's see how Memphis State does here. They're going to put a couple of people along the free throw lane. Askew and Boyd, they've got Bedford and Holmes at midcourt. They're two bigger men. Pretty good idea. You get your bigger guys back so you don't get a layup. You got your big guys to reject the shot if it comes inside. Eight seconds left. Memphis State by one. Andre Turner on the line. Look at that sea of red that he's looking into. Missed it. Here's the ball game. Five seconds left. Wagner contested by Boyd. Out of bounds. One second left. And a foul has been called against Memphis State. Watch Wagner, one-on-one, -on -one, just like we said. It had to be him. He goes to the baseline. There's a lot of confusion over there. You see Turner right there on the backside. Dwight Boyd on the front side. There's the foul. Don Rudlich makes the call, and it goes against Andre Turner. Folks, it all comes down to this. If Mill Wagner can make these two, it's over. 
He just made two free throws Wednesday night at South Carolina to win the ball game. Milt Wagner has made 48 of his last 50 free throw attempts. One second left. It's tied. This next free throw is for the Metro Conference Championship. There's nothing else we can tell you. One second to play. It's over. Crumb's 49th birthday present is the Metro Conference regular season championship. It is Bedlam in Freedom Hall. Fred, let's go back and look at the foul. This was the play. Watch Wagner breaking down the right side of the court. There was no question he was going to be the man who was going to take the shot. Look at Andre Turner. He's following the play. He comes up from the back side. Look at Wagner make one fake, start to go up. The foul comes across the arm, and there's Turner flying out of bounds, and Don Rutledge pointing and saying, you got him on the arm. Milt Wagner, who with two seconds left Wednesday night in Columbia, South Carolina, made two free throws to win a ball game, made two with one second left here today, has now hit... 50 of his last 52 free throws and Louisville, the regular season Metro Conference champions get the bye now on Friday here in the first round and Memphis State will play South Carolina in first round action here. Louisville going to 24 and 7 on the year, finishing the Metro Conference regular season 10 and 2. Memphis State at 25 and 4, finishing the regular season at 9 and 3. What a game, Larry Cummings. One of the best ones we've seen all year, Fred. We've seen a lot of college basketball this year, but you won't find any better than what you just watched. Today's Budweiser player of the game is the freshman center from Louisville, Purvis Ellison. 18 points on the afternoon and eight rebounds here today and 13 of the points in the second half. And I want to go back to my colleague, Larry Conley, who said at halftime they're going to have to get Ellison more involved to win this ball game. They were down four points at that time. Well, they got him more involved, 13 points in the second half and a win. He had a great game in the second half, but you got to also credit Wagner. He came on when he needed to, and he got the shots when he had to have them. They are still celebrating in Freedom Hall. Boy, what a finish. Dana Kirk, you know, had the guy he wanted on the line, Andre Turner. And Andre Turner simply missed the free throw. He is a tremendous player. We have been singing his praises all afternoon. Not much more you can say about it. I'm sure he feels very badly in the locker room right now. But the Tiger season far from over. The Metro Conference tournament to go. They're a lock for a bid in the NCAA postseason play. So now the Metro Conference Tournament will unfold beginning next Friday here in Freedom Hall. Here's the way they'll stack up. Cincinnati will go against Southern Mississippi. Florida State will take on Virginia Tech. And South Carolina and Memphis State will be the other hookup. And the bye, of course, goes to Louisville, the regular season Metro Conference champion. So all the action begins next Friday here. And Saturday afternoon, the semifinal games will be seen along the Raycom Sports Network. On Sunday, we'll have the Metro Conference Championship match. And if it comes back to these same two teams again, we're quite likely to see the same kind of a ball game. You're a lucky man, Fred. You're gonna